Hey, I'm back on again. I guess I got my second wind. Um, so something interesting happened um, as I was re-watching um, the film or the video that I, I just created, um, and which I do. I, I re-watch it um, and I, yeah, I critique myself and like, oh God, oh my God, I didn't say that correctly or I could have said that better, yada, yada, yada. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't need a team of 30 production assistants to tell me that I, I can actually do it on my own, um, just by watching it back and learning from it. It's amazing, isn't it? Um, so anyway, um, the last few minutes I was, um, I was covering on my most recently posted video. I got a strange phone call from a number that should not have this telephone number. Which happens a lot to me. Um, you know, it could be scams, but as a DoD whistleblower and also now a vocal critic of Ron DeSantis and Mike Waltz and what they've done to the state of Florida and how they've imperiled the state of Florida. Um, yeah, I, I don't take anything for granted. So anyway, I did reach out to my mother um, just to be like, hey... Are these any of your husband's people? Because he has some people in Lakeland, Florida. And I'm not fond of my stepfather and whatever, but I just, you know, better to check. And I mean, he's he's pretty hardcore military intelligentsia, as I've come to learn. So there is that, too. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I don't know anybody in Lake Okeechobee. Um, they did leave a message, a voicemail, and I don't think they intended to. It's, it's strange. I, it's strange that they have my number. I just like, let's see if they'll play. Here, I'm going to start it over. I have to get off the. Oh crap, you found a rocket launcher. So, I mean, I could have gotten butt dialed, but it still begs the question, how did you get this number? Okay, it could have been a rando wrong number. This happens, you know. I It happened more so in the era before um, cell phones because we tend to save our cell phone numbers. So, probably not super likely that it's the wrong number. And I'm guessing with, I'm going to go with butt dialed because they didn't realize that it, that voicemail was going. Yeah, so maybe they had my number and butt dialed me, which begs the question, how the hell do they have my number? Because I know nobody in Okeechobee. I know very, very few people have this number for a reason that is heavily connected, um, most unfortunately, to my DOD whistleblower case. Yes, our government is that depraved. Um, they know what they did, so I don't have to point it out. The select subcommittee can. <laughs> um, I don't know nothing about that. <clears throat> Just kidding. Um, I sure do. Um, anyway, I started looking around, and um, one of my favorite places to go is Wikipedia. And so I go to Wikipedia, and I look up Okeechobee, and I love seeing the notable persons, because it's no accident that Wiki wants you to know the notable people for towns. And is it just gee whiz? I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Um, so there is, um, let me see. Tom Rooney, a former congressman, um, a JAG, former JAG. I have been very critical of the JAG Corps. I've been very critical of Ron DeSantis and his tenure as a JAG and his tenure as it coincides with his service as a representative. Um, so it's a little interesting to me. Um, yeah, probably nothing. But again, you know, when you're as critical as I have been about some scary people and you don't have bottomless pockets like those scary people do, yeah, Never hurts to, you know, take precautions. Um, could have just been an honest misdial. Could have been 
somebody doing something they weren't supposed to do. Who knows? I don't know. Um, they did also send a text message. There was like a text service. I <clears throat> with the hypertexted number for a Dallas area code. I'm not gonna click that number. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not clicking that number. Hell no. Hell no. I don't know where that fucker leads to. That might be paranoid as fuck. I don't care. I literally don't know where that number leads to. I literally don't. I don't even know where the hypertext for the first one leads to. Yeah, I'm not gonna make any assumptions with these people. They could be a harmless butt dial, or it could be something a little less innocuous. Yeah, as a whistleblower, you can't take any chances. You have to be creative in order to hold people accountable. Shout out to Super Dad. Oh, oh, oh. For keeping um, the Pelosi's accountable, for holding the Pelosi's accountable. Thank you, Super Dad. Thank you. Um, so, I just wanted to throw that throw that out there and let everybody know. And if there are people not watching this from home who are also whistleblowers, put it put this in your toolkit. You know, um, let's let's just say hypothetically. Hypothetically, let's let's say my. I wouldn't say mm, suspicions, that's maybe too strong a word, but hackles. Maybe getting my hackles up is just me. But let's just say hypothetically, Huckleberry, no, no. Hey, no, 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 Huckleberry, no. Let's just say hypothetically, it's a baddie. Just, and I'm not saying that's the case. Let's just say hypothetically it is. Um, they would want me to behave erratically after that phone call if they were indeed a baddie if they were somebody who's involved in the reprisal and retaliation that i've been on the receiving end of since um, about january of 2020. um yeah they would want me to behave erratically they would want me to they would want to get into my head and they've done that before like i have no shame in saying these people have gotten into my head before and badly that's how I've learned. That's how I've had to learn. And I, I still cave to it from time to time, but it, they've gotten into my head so badly that I've ended up, before the, before the involuntary admissions, when the first um, round of reprisal and retaliation, yeah, the first round was that brutal, I ended up suicidal, yeah by February, 2020. Yeah, it was only a few weeks. I was already in rough shape before I made the disclosures because I was dealing with this pain in the ass lieutenant. Then I got a concussion because I had an accident where um, my garbage can slapped me in the face and my stupid ass, um, I would say E8, not a senior NCO, but an E8, um, expected me to drive 90 minutes from Middletown, Delaware to Horsham um, Air, Air Guard Station. And granted, it wasn't a life-threatening concussion. It was mild. Um, I didn't need to be behind the wheel of a car. Dumb ass. And then he told me that I was going to have to take leave for the next, what, 10 consecutive days just to fucking stiff me. Fucking asshole. An idiot. Just complete idiot. So anyway, um, let's just assume that um, that was a baddie. They want to get in your head. They want to rile you up. They want to... They want to find the easiest way to discredit you. Yeah, the easiest way to discredit you. Think about it logistically. The easiest way to discredit you is probably the most affordable way to discredit you too. Um, and that's often, you know, like an underlying factor for the ease. Um, but yeah, they, that, you behaving erratically, scribbling crazy shit in the journal, scribbling your feelings in a journal, I'm, I wouldn't recommend that. I know that that sounds pretty out there. I wouldn't recommend that. Beware the ambulance drivers. Um, yeah, they they want you looking over your shoulder. They that's how they want you. That's how they want you. That that's how and and I, and I still get it wrong. I still get it wrong from time to time. Um, but that that's when when you're behaving that way. It is making their job easier and it is making them more effective at doing their job. So you have to, as, as hard as it is to hear this, and I hate having to hear it because I know it's true when it's told to me by people who care about me. 
Um, you, you have to find humorous ways to deal with it, creative ways to deal with it. I, fuck, I'm going to use my fucking constitutional right to fucking call them out, hypothetically, because it might have just been like a rando, like accidental, you know, although I have been getting um, an obscene amount of n phone calls from random numbers from Florida lately um, who shouldn't have my number. But again, accidents happen. Um, so anyway, that's my two cents. And if, if you find yourself not watching this from home thinking, oh my God, I'm a whistleblower too. Oh my God, put this in your fucking toolkit. You know, like I, I saw something on the, the subreddit, the whistleblower subreddit the other day. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? It was like tips for whistleblowers, what to expect. Completely fucking useless. Completely fucking useless. It gives you this cut and dry. Oh, you made a complaint. Thank you so much for coming forward. This is what we're going to do. You're going to initiate the complaint. And this is how many days we're going to get back to you. And there's going to be an investigation. And by the way, this is the outcome. And you can get an attorney. And these are the kind of attorneys you want to look for. And this, this is the resolution. Oh, no. Oh, try even making a complaint. I have been shut down by federal agencies just in initiating, not even the investigation portion. I was literally on the phone with um, somebody from SSA on, I believe, the 6th of February. And thank God I have that on audio. Disturbing fucking phone call. Um, it, it's... There's a reason Hucky was biting me. Now I forgot. Oh, God. What was I going to say? Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, get creative. Do what you need to do. I record my phone calls. If I start feeling, whether I'm overreacting, if I start feeling kind of weird in a public situation. I'm whipping out my phone. I'm not going to be Karen'd. I'm Well, I'm going to, guess what? Let's let's unfuck the narrative. I'm not going to be reverse Karen because we don't know what happens in the preceding moments of those videos. We don't know. We don't even know who the bystanders and the active participants, some of them very antagonistic. We don't even know if they're on somebody's dime. Blockbusting. Blockbusting is a thing. Blockbusting was a big problem during suburbanization and what people now attribute to white flight um, or attribute white flight to that. Well, okay, yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm trying to sound fancy and it's, it's, you know, it's not working out well for me. So I should just, you know, sound trashy. So um, can, I, can I have my hand back, please? Oh my God, oh, so much bitey. So yeah, do what you need to do. Do what you need to do. Because these people are, they, nothing is sacred to these people. Nothing, absolutely nothing is sacred to these people. Sometimes not even their own children. Yeah, just sick. Just, just absolutely divorced from what is good, what is kind, what is moral, what is just, what is right, what is courageous. Just absolutely divorced from it. So, so don't take any chances. And you know what? My rationale for anybody sitting at home think, well, it's crazy even think that. Well, fuck you. Walk them out in my goddamn shoes and then tell me that that's crazy. It's like that. Um, I don't. I won't go into it. Um, but um, yeah, walk them out in my shoes and then tell me, tell me that I'm crazy for having that reaction. Yeah, it might seem inappropriate to you. And I'll grant, I'll grant you that, but there's a very good reason why I react the way that I do. And I'm not saying that it's grounds to not change it. I'm working on it, and that's all anybody ever needs to know. I, I think I'm a, a pretty fucking stand-up human being. I pay my taxes. I don't violate people. I don't harass people. I, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, I use my my civil liberties to criticize elected officials and people people in positions of power who are abusing that power and abusing it greatly. And, yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to keep on doing that. What, why not? I mean, I did it in the service. It served me well because I found my vocation. You know, yeah, I lost my job, sure. 
but what I found was so much greater than a job. And, and that's not a sour grapes kind of, I, I, I loved forecasting, loved it. Um, but anyway, I don't know why I'm blathering on. I'm going to get off the horn and maybe one day I'll do like, um, like a DOD whistleblower diary playbook, like things that have helped me, um, things that I've done wrong where I've been like, fuck, why didn't I just do this? Why? Why? Um, things that I didn't even think about because when you're, when you're so bogged down by the terror and the fear, I mean, we're talking pathological terror, pathological fear, um, and not unwarranted, absolutely not unwarranted. It is so hard to think critically in those moments. So I'm, I'm looking back even now and I'm just like, Oh my God, I never thought about that from that angle, like, um, with regard to my, ho even my hospitalization at the VA hospital, it just occurred to me, um, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, as I was talking that, and I completely forgot it, completely forgot it. It, it occurred to me as I was talking about two to three weeks ago that my spouse knew explicitly that I was terrified of the VA hospital system, the VA healthcare system, and military healthcare explicitly because of what happened to me at Dover Air Force Base Mental Health Clinic. He knew that for a fucking fact and a half multiplied by infinity squared. Um, it didn't occur to me until two weeks ago, and I already knew, I mean, by two, by, by late August of 2022, early September, the writing was on the wall. I mean, it was, it was like fucking spray paint my fucking eyes and some mace and some billy clubs up in there, but the writing was on the wall. But that, that profound um, tidbit that I completely overlooked didn't occur to me till two weeks ago. So I'm still, as I'm healing and processing and moving on from these, I'll just leave that close to the best for now. But as I'm, I'm moving on, I'm, I am getting different kind of like getting, maybe gaining different sense of clarity from the situation. Um, and there have been a couple of like, oh my God, how did I not even think of that? Like how did, but I, that's, I mean, that's when you're in the terror in the fear, it's, I mean, I'm human. It was damn near impossible for me to think critically. And it only makes sense as I'm like, um, as I'm moving towards a state of wellness and recovering from a, a just obscene trauma. Um, it's yeah, like, yeah, of course I'm starting to get different perspectives on it and, um, think more critically, more healthfully about it. Um, yeah, I guess it's only natural. But um, so anyway, yeah, one of these days I'm going to make like a, a little whistleblower's guide that's actually helpful, that'll ha actually help you manage your expectations. Because the thing that that little fucking handout on Reddit did not disclose, this will likely, within scale, obviously, um, to your disclosure, um, but either way, suffering is suffering. Um, it's not going to be easy. They are not going to make it easy on you. If this is a corporation with deep pockets, they are going to try to fuck you 69 ways from Sunday. You have to be strong. Like they're gonna, they're going to talk about your mental health. They're going to talk about, um, perceived addictions. They're going to talk about your behavior. They're going to talk about your performance. They're going to speculate about your marriage. They're going to speculate about your relationships. They're going to leave no stone unturned and they won't hesitate to say something, um, um, baldly false, patently false, maybe even criminally false about you. Yeah, they, they won't. Um, but I, I got to get on that. I got to get on that. I, I've learned so much from the process. And quite frankly, I'm still learning from it. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'm going to get going. I'm going to go bullshit. And Hucky took a big Walmart dump for me to clean up. Yeah. Hey, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Kind of like Cray OC taking a shit on the American working class um, majority that... Um, 
cannot afford a, a designer garment just to throw paint on it. Yeah, ooh, that's not gonna age well. Yeah, if you're claiming to be for the people, taxing the rich to feed the poor, you wearing a garment that one of your constituents, one of your average constituents who lives well below the poverty line could feed her because you have a, a high proportionality of single mother households in your demographic, could feed her family of children multiple, three to five, um, probably for several months. And you just, you dump paint on it to make a statement because Anna Wintour invited you to the Met Gala. Hmm, oh, okay. That must have been nice. I hope it was worth it, Sandy. You are, there's no getting out of this one. Um, Anna Wintour is a courtier of the, the crown. Nah, you fucked up. That's bad. That's real bad, especially after the whole Nord Stream pipeline thing, dude. The US might have carried that out. The word on the street, the E3 underground, that was coordinated well above the US. We're just, we're the fucking banana republic that you guys pluck fruit from. Yeah, we're the, we are the Hunger Games. We're the fucking tribute that Jenner, Jennifer J. Fraud Lawrence has made bank off of. Yeah, we're the tribute. Yeah, it's great. Not. Anyway, I'm going to go. All right, um, y'all have a good one. And um, if you're in the whistleblower boat, not watching this from home, keep your chin up. Um, the best thing you can do is talk to people, not feel isolated, don't feel ashamed, don't feel like you have to justify anything. And shit, if you ever wanna like vent or like make a comment or some shit, go right on ahead and I will do my best to respond um, in a way that I hope is helpful um, and meaningful. All right, I'm gonna go. Bye. Bye.